about to start the presentation of the specializing masters in industrial design for architecture. And I now leave the floor to the Professor Matteo Ingaramo, who is the scientific director of the program. Thank you, Federica. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, let's say that the first thing that I would like to, to, to talk about is about uh, the title of our specializing master. As you can see there, is, is clearly written industrial design for architecture and not industrial design and architecture. Our idea in, is to express quite clearly that we wanted to use the industrial design mindset and, and skills in order to improve the, the abilities of uh, uh, designers that are designing spaces, let's say architecture. Um, industrial design has its own uh, specificity about uh, being temporary, not permanent, about being um, uh, multiple, uh, uh, producing uh, big uh, size of units, batch sizes, and so on. So being serial. And uh, those elements uh, seem to match very much uh, uh, in a a certain kind of buildings and, uh, and installations and architecture in general that are very, very contemporary. Uh, our goal is to, to use the multidisciplinary approach of uh, industrial design that is uh, related to many disciplines and not only technical, uh, with a lot of humanities, a lot of uh, user-centered uh, approach, and, uh, and try to, to front uh, the architecture complexity, giving to the uh, variable and the fast changing buildings of nowadays uh, some value more. Uh, so we would like uh, to have uh, architects and designers uh, able uh, to design an architecture that is uh, fresh, contemporary, feasible, and um, let's say, uh, being a part of a system of value. In that sense, we like very much to, to, to talk about uh, clients that are not private, but clients that are complex. Complex in terms of uh, real estate companies or even other companies, service companies, could be a bank that wants to build uh, the headquarters. And this bank is a company with a brand, with a strategy, with a value, with product, services, interaction with users and clients. So the building will be the machine of deployment of their business. So that is the point that probably closed the circle of the vision of the design for architecture. That does, it doesn't mean only to be able to create a temporarity and working with the technologies in order to give to buildings from one side the capability of being machines that are durable, but not so much, and variable if, you, if it's needed, but also adaptable and, and designed to be efficient in order to satisfy the need uh, of the client that is uh, uh, investing money in order, of course, to get a value back. That value could be a, a money, of course, could be economical, but in our opinion, that should be something that is qualitative. That means quality of life, that means satisfaction and correspondence to the ex general expectations of the users, and uh, uh, maybe adding some positive, hmm, positive addition to, to human life. Why not? Why not? So it's not, uh, it's not difficult for us to interpret in that sense uh, ethical uh, um, briefs and not working only for, let's say, economical subjects. So we consider the complexity of, uh, of any client uh, a parameter of uh, uh, industrial design for architecture. So our professional outcomes uh, will be people, able to design buildings that are corresponding to their vision. In this sense, probably, what happens is that a real estate could, uh, uh, could hire 
architects and designers like that because those designers are able to understand where is the value and which kind of, the, the, of value the real estate is really looking for. Or maybe um, this architect or designer that is going out of this master could be uh, an architect able to design for a brand, to, to create the environment, right environment that is representing the company identity, the product service system deployment on the market and offer on the market and being able to uh, host workers that are making part of an organization that is, has its own strategy and identity. So those are more or less uh, the, the elements of a vision that we consider quite rare because the, the field of architecture and industrial design are quite separated, at least in Europe. And uh, in, as we are in a polytechnical context, in a, in a university that has four schools, two in engineering, one in architecture and one in design, there were a strong opportunity to create a fusion between those three, uh, four, sorry, um, source of knowledge and try to create an integration that were enabling a new uh, generation of designers prepared to front the future. And let me say that the contingency of this pandemic probably signed uh, the, the contract with the future. So it's asking us really to think about that and to offer to ourselves hmm, um, a vision that uh, really uh, push us to think about something that is positive, coherent, and sustainable in a world that is exhausted. And probably that is what we are looking for. Um, so the structure of our teaching, and I will leave the floor to Silvia in order to uh, show a little bit more which are the topics. As you can see, is based on the fact that we want to challenge our students creating a mindset that will let them to use in a probably in a different way the tools that they already have um, in some way so they you you will be admitted because you are already uh, structured um, professionals with maybe a little bit of experience and maybe with a, with a very good uh, diploma in, or maybe a master of science so why why to teach you the basics okay but uh, uh, we want to challenge your basics and merge that basics with another mindset that is coming from a different culture, that is the serial and uh, technological world of industrial design and the user-centered approach of industrial design in order to recombine those elements of knowledge and uh, come out of the master with uh, uh, new abilities that we really hope that will be very useful for you to be outstanding in a very competitive um, environment of, uh, of architecture. So please, uh, Silvia, I'll give, you, I'll give you the floor in order to explain which is the structure of our, yes. of our teaching offer. And uh, maybe I will come back with some, some addition uh, in the next chat. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Ingaramo. As you were saying, uh, this master is an educational course that aims to integrate theoretical knowledge on one side with design studios and vocational activities. What are vocational activities? They are visits to companies and practices, but also allowing the student to meet with professionals. This is something that we really care about. So once the didactic part of the master is concluded, the students also will undergo into a mandatory internship in architecture or design practices or companies that are active in the building uh, sector. So coming to the structure itself of the, of the master, the program includes uh, three formative areas that are dealing with uh, different aspects of industrial design. The first one is design culture, so the history and evolution of design with a special reference to the aesthetic developments and to the ever close relationship that has been developing over the years between product and built up space. The second area is the one of design technology. So it uh, includes the study of different uh, technologies, innovative materials, and also innovative tools that are needed in conceiving and realizing uh, products that combine 
could combine themselves in a built environment. The third area is the one of design strategy. So it encompasses the study of new construction processes, design innovation management, and also an introduction of design in the corporate strategies of companies in the built environment sector always. So as you can understand, our teachers come from the academic world, but as well as from the professional world, both from the Italian context, but also from an international one in order to offer to our students a real insight from their most innovative researches, as well as from the professional international world. So we really want to push this multifaceted approach because we really think that it can enrich the student's experience when they join the master. The fourth area that is added to the previous three ones that I already described will be the one of design studios and seminars which will include a practical work on design and on various uh, design themes, such as, uh, for example, designing the finishes, the built up products uh, in order to be integratable into the built, uh, the building components, designing, uh, I don't know, electronic consumer products and space saving products that are highly integratable within the building manufacturing, but also designing serial construction products that are, for example, temporary structures or modular building solutions. All these tasks may be individual, but also in teams and may envisage the, the participation of a leading company in the sector of reference. So teamwork is absolutely something that we strongly encourage among our students during the design studios and during the exercises they will undergo. It could rep represents, of course, on one side, a sort of uh, stressful and delicate moment, but it absolutely resembles the actual dynamic of working in the built environment sector. So it represents a, a sort of challenge on one side, but it also represents an occasion for mutual learning among the students, a sort of, let's say, gym in which it is possible to test and develop personal skills, but also to learn new methods from the other teammates and also an occasion for cultural exchange and expertise exchange among the students and between students and the teachers and professionals. So the theme of the master, of course, has an international ranging. It is held in English and the participants every year come from all over the world. But at the same time, the, the master is also deeply rooted into the culture of Italian design and into the culture of Italian architecture. So let's, if we can go to the next slide, please. Thank you very much, Federica. Why choosing the ID4A master? Uh, because the ID4A uh, master, ID4A, uh, Industrial Design for Architecture master, aims to train professionals skillful at developing high quality projects in the field that ranges over the architectural layout and the efficiency of the building components. The master also has the, the objective of completing the training of designers and of the architects, extending their expertise and problem solving skills with the culture and tools that are typical of industrial design. This is something that already Professor Ingaramo explained before. And what we, we hopefully will can give you, the students will become hopefully expert designers with the theoretical knowledge that is combined with a significant experience applied to the construction industry. But at the same time, probably they could be a sort of a product manager with a strong multidisciplinary attitude that are involved in, de in the development of new products uh, and in their inclusion of these new uh, products uh, into the built environment sector. May I add something, maybe, sure. Silvia, about that? Uh, let's say that um, when, when we deal with our design studio during the master, um, the, the main objective is to create a number of uh, um, boundaries that will be uh, transformed during the design process in team, uh, negotiating continuously uh, the, the design with, uh, with the faculty, transforming that, uh, that um, boundaries in tools. Why? Because the boundaries are limiting, but also creating uh, the perimeter, let's say the, the environment of the decisions for, for a designer. And one of the outstanding abilities of designers is to decide, to take a choice. 
But if that choice is only depended by your culture and your personality, the risk is that you express yourself like an artist and not like a professional that is uh, asked to follow the needs of a company. And the client is part of the design process. Why? Because they are going to use it and they could be satisfied by that aesthetical approach maybe, but using uh, uh, that kind of value machine that a building is maybe, they will not match uh, with our design proposal. So why to, to make a client unsatisfied uh, in terms of functionality and uh, getting uh, a lot of compliments in terms of aesthetics, uh, making that choice, uh, or, uh, and why not to, to get both? Okay. So our point is that getting both, we, we uh, also get much more complexity. It's more difficult and uh, we don't have the total freedom uh, of the of the artist and, and that's uh, that's uh, uh, real and that is a constraint of course but that uh, uh, let's say uh, is like a gym Silvia was saying you know in which you train your mind in order to um, drive you know, your creativity into a forest of boundaries you know and you have to come out you have to come out with, with the best design that will, uh, will be loved, appreciated, that will be able to fascinate the client and the users, of course, but also functioning in a perfect way. And let's say that the economical framework here is, is giving a lot of uh, opportunity to be useful hmm? and not out of the creative process because the economics are the boundaries of the feasibility. But you have also other problems, uh, local issues, material choice, hmm? time for construction, time for the market in order to get on the market when that, uh, of that uh, manufacture will be sold. So those elements, as you can see, are much uh, more related to products of, of design than to buildings, but buildings are products. And that is our point, and that it, it, it is our challenge. And that's why sometimes we select uh, uh, not really buildings, but uh, special buildings that are representing very uh, iconically, let's say, uh, th these elements. Why? Because we are uh, embedded in a, in a process of, uh, of value proposition. They are making part of a business model. They are strictly connected to brand and products and services delivered or maybe because they are very very related to a contingent issue so let's let's talk about uh, olympic villages about uh, uh, bases and headquarters of an america's cup uh, team uh, talking about the temporary houses in the La La bolsena lake in italy for for um, um a festival that doesn't have enough hospitality. So elements that are asking to be effective to solve a problem and to give a strong function to definite issues. So in that sense, we will train you probably to, to get in touch with the identification methodology that is needed in order to set up the right frame to, to go for a design that is conscious, and proven. That, uh, in our opinion, is being very professional in delivering an architecture that is, uh, that is uh, made for your client, but made for uh, the functions that the, the, the building has to satisfy. So in that sense, uh, that uh, consciousness is an ability. Mm -hmm. And being aware about the consequence of our proposal of architecture will be the second secret, let's say, of, uh, of the positive addition of this master. Because the buildings are machines, of course, because the buildings are impacting strongly in our life if we use that buildings to, to live in, to work in and whatever, but also are making part of a cultural approach. And as the products, uh, that are produced by industry are impacting in our uh, philosophy of life and in our lifestyle, buildings are too. So why those buildings has only to be uh, 
artistic representing uh, the physical aspect okay, of, uh, of a normal traditional structure of, uh, of living. Now, probably they could be part of a process of change, as we were saying, a piece of a part of our future. Absolutely. Um, Please, you, can, you can carry on if you want, Silvia. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, Thanks, Matteo. And maybe we can go to the uh, to the calendar, let's say, to the brief calendar of the master. This this is the yeah, thanks. This is a list of the overall modules that the master will include in the summary calendar of the whole duration of the master. So the next edition, as you can see, will start in November 2021 and the classes will close on July 2022. And after that, as I said before, all the students will experience a 40, 480 hours internship and the whole master will be concluded in January 2023 with a final exam with the, the whole master board. The teaching modalities. Uh, as you can understand, after the pandemic, we introduced the possibility to, ha to have uh, blended classes and we still will offer for the next edition the possibility to have uh, blended classes. And uh, the blended mode, of course, uh, on one side uh, allows the students to have the possibility to follow online the lessons and to have uh, students that uh, fruitfully collaborate uh, with the students that will be in presence. So a sort of collaboration between in presence and uh, online students. Um, we said that we will include also on-site visits and a part of them can be provided also in an online mode. But of course, uh, we have to be sincere and some of the visits that we are planning a little bit could not be provided digitally. So we will provide to the students uh, compensatory activities that are as interesting as the visits, of course, they doesn't have to, to look like something that is just a reparation for something that cannot happen, but really we organized this year other very involving activities involving the companies that are partner of the master for the students. Maybe Matteo wants to add something. Uh, yes, maybe we could say that uh, we, we challenged ourselves uh, during the pandemic in order to, te to test uh, if we were able to provide uh, let's say uh, the same um, qualitative experience of teaching and learning uh, on remote. Uh, we were scared about that because uh, our methodology in Milan is based on a um, iterative process of ne intellectual negotiation that is quite um, dense and uh, in person in, uh, it's, uh, it's effective. So we tried, we, we got some uh, processes of interaction with our students that uh, that are functioning very well and we got we were surprised about the fact that sometimes uh, the deepness of the development of some ideas it's even more detailed and qualitative if it's uh, managed in in a uh, blended situation or or even more in a in a full remote uh, uh, experience of course, the two, the two approaches to the teaching are different, of course, and the visits are one, a part of an experience that is also environmental. You know, the design and architecture environment of Italy is, is making part of the experience and, uh, and understand that mood, okay? uh, intellectual mood is important, of course it is. But, uh, uh, finally, what is, uh, what is delivered uh, in this master is a diploma that enable, that enable with ability. And so the experiential part could be more, let's say, based on your abilities and less uh, maybe on the, on the uh, let's say, the wideness you know, of your cultural, of your cultural uh, um, culture. No? But, uh, and this could be the difference. But let me say that uh, quite, uh, I'm quite sure that uh, both uh, approaches are, are um, effective for our students and, uh, and uh, we were satisfied about the results that obviously are evident in the exercise that are delivered by, by our students in class. So uh, let me say that uh, if you are allowed to come, and to, to experience, uh, we would love to have you in class, but it could be that you decided that you, 
that you stay at home because that experience could be done also fully in remote and why not? Why not? Uh, we could front it uh, because we are trained for that, uh, even if it was unexpected, of course, but we decided to let open that uh, choice in order to get a student that is uh, fully committed uh, with, uh, with the master uh, proposal and not only to the teaching methods and framework that are sometimes uh, uh, too rigid, maybe. So adapting is, uh, is always a good thing and we did it and we could make it more, maybe. So, and, and evolving uh, with, uh, with our contents in order to, to be more corresponding to the full remote uh, participant. Okay. So you are welcome to express uh, your hypothesis. Uh, the only thing that is not uh, admitted, is not allowed to our students is to, to, to change it during the master set position. So I'm, I was here, but I want to go home. That cannot be done or reverse, of course. I'm, I'm staying at home, but now I'm coming, okay? So that decision could be not done during the master course because it's affecting the whole teaching process and the team structure, the level of interaction with the faculty and the level of interaction between the students that are participating in team working. So that will be not uh, good, let's say, for our, from our point of view. Uh, but if you want to ask uh, to our um, collaborators uh, how to come and, and when and uh, which are the limits of that, uh, you, are, you are welcome to do it. And, uh, and the admission to the master will follow the same level of selection. No difference is that. Eh? No difference is that, no privilege are allowed for one kind or another of students, of course, because we consider both the students at the same at the same level of course working on remote it's time consuming we have problems with the difference of hours if you are living in india for instance or south america and that affects a little bit the calendar so we want to, we would love to have to know it in advance of course that except of the pandemic that uh, it's uh, promising a better better times but we don't know. So we, we know that we could provide it. The title is perfectly valid and the process of teaching is, is perfectly valid in our opinion. All the, all the scientific commission of the master is, uh, is very convincing about that. So we are going to deliver the master in any case, in any case, so you can trust that, but uh, we don't know yet uh, what could, what could uh, uh, happen in our in our work. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, I would leave the floor to Elisa for some comment more about the admission system and uh, and the tuition fees and and so on. So please, Elisa, thank you. Hi. Hello, uh, everyone. Thank you, Professor Ingaramo and Professor Ominia. Uh, my name is Elisa Piccini, and uh, I'm uh, in uh, the Education Office of Poly Design. And uh, I would like to give you some uh, details uh, about the selection and admission process. Mainly uh, here, in, uh, you may find the link in which you can uh, enter to um, complete uh, your candidacy for the master. Uh, in particular, you can find uh, um, also um, by access, you may find it uh, by accessing uh, the website of Polydesign on the specific page of the master. Uh, you will find uh, a button named apply. And so mainly there you can uh, click, you will be carried to uh, a form in which you will be required to um, write some uh, details, some bio details, uh, names, uh, name and contact, and you will be required to uh, upload your uh, selection documents. Uh, in particular, a CV, a motivation letter in which you explain why you would like to um, submit your application and why you, you would like to, to take the master and to attend the master, uh, a portfolio of, uh, of projects that can be referred to uh, university projects uh, or work projects in case you uh, are already working uh, in, uh, in the field. And then you will be required to upload uh, the scanning of your degree and uh, of your university transcript and a scanning of your ID card or passport. 
mainly after having submitted all of these uh, documents, um, we will uh, uh, get in touch with you in order to fix a date uh, for uh, the entry test for uh, for uh, for the master. Uh, we will pure we will provide you some dates in which you can uh, receive uh, the, the entry test. It will be sent by email and you will have four hours in order to, uh, to reply to the questions. And after this step, uh, you will uh, have an interview, a Skype interview uh, with uh, one of the members of, uh, of the master board. After this process, uh, we will provide you with uh, a feedback about uh, uh, the eligibility for, uh, for the master after having evaluated both um, by the master board, your profile from the uh, entry exam, motivation interview and uh, uh, portfolio and CV point of view. And uh, from the formal point of view that is uh, evaluated by Politecnico di Milano in terms of the evaluation of your degree and transcript. So after uh, um, these two evaluations, you will receive uh, a feedback, one official feedback. Um, and in case you are considered uh, eligible for uh, the master, you will receive the details uh, on how to process your enrollment for the master itself. Uh, the master has a limited number of uh, available places, uh, that is 20. Uh, so mainly uh, here you may find uh, the, the deadlines uh, before which you need to apply, but we generally suggest to apply as soon as possible because of the limited number of places available, first of all, and also because, uh, of course, if uh, you are coming from abroad, uh, you might need some uh, time, let's say, to, to fix uh, your moving to Italy, your setting uh, to Italy in terms of visa, uh, accommodation, and so on. So that's why we generally suggest to, uh, admit, uh, to submit the application as soon as you are sure that this one is the right master for you. Uh, uh, mainly, um, last detail, uh, the cost of the master is 12,000 euro. Uh, in particular, 500 euro are uh, the enrollment and matriculation fee to Politecnico di Milano, whereas 11,500 is the attendance fee for the master. In case you will be admitted, uh, you won't have to uh, submit the whole amount but at, at once, uh, but you will be required to, for uh, a down payment covering only a part of, uh, of this amount. Uh, and so mainly uh, these are more or less uh, the process uh, of selection that you will have to submit and uh, um, in case of admission uh, to uh, enroll in, uh, in the master itself. Thank you so much. Thank you, Elisa. And thanks to the Professor Gramenia and Inga Ramo. We are now actually ready to answer all of the questions that you might have. So please write them into the Q&A section and we're just gonna have a look at them right now. Um, so I would, would like to answer to two questions. Absolutely, so One yeah. is about um, how is the internship figure going? Does PolyDesign determine the internships? Of course, we do. Uh, we, we consider the internship, uh, the completion of a learning process. So we are going to select and propose to you the internships because we 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 believe that uh, this choice will complete your abilities and, and uh, refine your your preparation so that will be a proposal that will be made by the poly design organization uh, with uh, the permission of the uh, scientific board of the master so so of course they will be determined that the period as you heard is about three not more than 300 hours and you have to follow all of them and to sign and register your hours there will be a signature of the internal tutor a signature of the uh, company tutor or studio tutor and yourself so it's a quite uh, official process that is uh, due and is asked if mandatory to get the uh, master uh, diploma. So uh, I hope that that was a complete answer. Uh, what skills do you develop uh, with this program that you want to develop with a degree in architecture? Huh. Uh, not easy to say. Uh, in our opinion, what happens is that uh, architecture is not uh, uh, a, a discipline that is um, uh, deliberate with a sense of reproduction 
and with a sense of process that is based on times and on resources. Is based on the selection of the right uh, elements of construction and uh, organization of the phases, and uh, with a strong commitment in uh, aesthetical and intellectual approach to, to the physical part of the building, that is the one that we see from outside, you know, the skin of the building. But uh, industrial design has an approach that comes from the core of the value and is much more related to the fact that, that if you have something that works with a mechanical functional system, you can add the final, the final identity to that, but cannot be reversed. Hmm? Is a, is a matter of dimension, is a matter of functions, but also a matter of uh, time, costs, uh, resources, and, and so on that are, that are impacting a lot in the decisions and in the choices. So that's probably what doesn't happen during, during the architecture uh, teaching uh, approaches. Could be that somewhere is like that and there are injections of uh, design thinking inside. But in our experience, uh, it's not that, uh, that common, it's quite rare. Let me also say that uh, um, I am an architect. And I was teaching architecture and I was in the, I am teaching design. And actually, I'm, I'm teaching in a, quite, uh, in a quite a technical master of science that is called design and engineering. So uh, that uh, overview is quite clear to me. And uh, I, I, I was and I am a professional in architecture and dealing with architecture like that helps a lot. And uh, I needed to, to, uh, to absorb that knowledge by my own because it was not delivered to me at the university. At least in Italy, it was like that. And delivering lectures all over the world, uh, it didn't happen to me to find a professor in architecture that are uh, clearly uh, uh, transferring that vision to, to the students. Not because they're bad guys, is, is, another, is another point, because their approach is about uh, talking about architecture like a kind of insulated system of knowledge that, uh, in our opinion, mm -hmm. cannot be. Mm -hmm. Cannot be nowadays. It could be maybe in a classical uh, uh, understanding of that profession uh, and probably in an historical approach uh, to architecture that was able to um, let's say to to control the need of uh, of the expansion of uh, of cities and the urban issue to be uh, adapted, governed, and so on. Now, architecture is a is a fact of human beings. is a matter of sustainability, not only of the earth but of the life and the quality of the life in a city in a urban context very dense probably is even more important than the aesthetical quality of the buildings and let me say that also the user changes a lot okay stereotypical approach is not any more valuable because family do, do not exist anymore uh, weddings do not exist anymore structures of uh, family friendship uh, eh, are not are not anymore fixed and people are traveling traveling a lot, changing uh, their life, changing the culture of the world, they, 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 they love their religion, everything. I, I remember that my grandmother lived, uh, was born, lived and died in the same house. Okay. I actually live in my seventh house and probably I will have seven more. So that, that makes a lot of difference and cannot be that each one of those houses is designed with an approach that is the same, you know? So, and that happens with my cell phone and should happen with my house. I would like as a user to have the same variation and the same capability of, of, of adaptation to my needs, but also to my style needs, okay? I want a house that is fashionable, why not? I want to change with season, okay? I want to be variable and, uh, and have what I want, like, uh, like in my culture it is. We are in a culture of consumption that is good. We, we're going to be converted in a, in a culture of preservation because of the circular economy. And that is, again, a fact of industry, of seriality, of strategies, um, approaches and protocols you know, of sustainability that could be very helpful in a vision of architecture that probably 
is not uh, so common in a school of architecture. Sorry for being that long, but it's something that I like very much and very, you know, empathic with that concept. Uh, last uh, question, example of workshops uh, on site visit. Uh, um, workshops. Uh, I mentioned that, that we, we worked for uh, America's Cup. Uh, I mentioned that, that uh, we work at America's Cup that sailing competition that is that has the the headquarters of the team that are living there for months that are uh, not only living there but training uh, making making business uh, uh, developing and constructing uh, tools for the sailing uh, reforming and restoring the boat so there are a little bit industry a little bit house, maybe a theater, a marketing place, a headquarters of a, of a company. So very, very strange. And they are super temporary and they, they had need to be moved. So that was a, an example. The other example that I made was that one that was committed by an old uh, town that is very near to Lago of Bolsena, Bolsena Lake in the center of Italy that is hosting a festival, uh, a cultural festival that uh, uh, make the population of that very small village uh, uh, 12 times uh, that they can support. They do not have hotels and they do not want to build hotels um, in order to preserve the landscape of the city. And they do understand that uh, 15 days of uh, super population could not justify a, a, a real building, an hotel that would be probably abandoned for the rest of the year, or maybe too big for the number of tourists that are, that are staying there for one night. So they asked us to, to think about floating houses that were temporary, touristic enough and landscaping, but they were, were asked to be uh, stocked during the, the low season. So they were fully uh, movie, movable and they were, let's say, on the lake and they were including experience for tourists and, uh, and so on. So two different approaches, as you can see, one very related to Italianity and so on, that we made a visit there uh, and uh, the mayor of the, of the town was hosting us, you know, very typical Italian situation, super landscaping, very good. And the America's Cup was the other side of the of the approach. So very business oriented, with brand, with commitment, very strict, with time to market, and the super high functionalities and people that wanted the right number of square meters in order to do that and, and so on. So those are just the two examples, but uh, uh, we have a number of uh, of other. Uh, uh, let's say maybe la la last year we were designing the facade, uh, removable facade for uh, Gucci flagship stores all over the world with a company that is realizing for Gucci those retail uh, um, elements. So, so quite uh, interesting to deal with Gucci brand to deal with the fact that the retail is not a house and it has a lot of constraints that you have to detect and to absorb in your design activity, then removable, sustainable, circular economy, and so on. So quite engaging, uh, very hard, uh, honestly, honestly, but uh, super satisfying in our, in our opinion. Thank you. I really like to thank our speakers for, for their time, for answering all of your questions. Just wanted to remind you all the more information about this master could be found on the website and also on the open day. We will be going also to post the uh, link to the registration of those presentation in case you miss some or you want to rewatch some of the details. So I really wanted to thank the Professor Ingaramo, the Professor Gramegna and Elisa Piccini for staying with us. And we look forward to seeing you soon in the next presentations over this day. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye